Today I'm going to show you my Photoshop workflow when I'm working with Topaz, Denoise AI, and Sharpen AI. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I hope everyone's doing great out there. Today I want to show you my uh, Photoshop, Topaz, Denoise AI, and Sharpen AI workflow. My Photoshop workflow starts out in Lightroom. So let me go to Lightroom and just give you a little run through here. I do basic edits, very basic edits here, okay? I don't use any texture clarity or dehaze adjustments on my image, but I use basic tone adjustments here. Now, the other thing I don't do is in detail, I don't add any sharpening or noise reduction, but I do, however, add a little bit of color noise reduction from Lightroom. It's a it's the default setting of 25. I find that really helps my images and I've done experimentation and that works for me. So you may want to experiment with that. Uh, but I find when I use that setting, I don't even have to touch uh, color noise in Denoise AI and it's just quicker. And the other thing I do is um, add uh, lens corrections. Now, I do remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections. Right now, this says none. Now, this particular lens doesn't have a profile that I know of. It's a lens baby image, and I don't believe Lightroom has a profile for that. So that will be on none on this particular image. And you notice it says here, unable to locate the matching profile automatically because lens baby lenses are a little different than your average uh, lens for your cameras. But I love them because they give you this really cool out of focus uh, area. You get a nice sweet spot and they're really creative. And I, I'm a flower guy and lens baby and flowers go hand in hand. Before we move over to Photoshop, I just want to address one thing here. And that is I do not use Topaz Denoise AI as a standalone product to uh, denoise raw files. And you may say, well, why don't you do that? Isn't that better? Well, I don't know. But one reason I don't, I actually have a couple of reasons why I don't do that. If I denoise my image as a raw file in Topaz Denoise AI, when I bring them into Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, I will no longer have my camera profiles. In other words, if you click, see these four little uh, rectangles, if you click here, you'll notice here I have camera matching profiles okay i have five of them okay and i use these and these are very important to me because i find sometimes i'll use neutral sometimes i'll use standard whichever one suits the image is the one i'll use okay in this particular image i'm going to use neutral okay but i also have adobe raw um, profiles and you won't have these either the only thing you'll have is a basic color profile and a basic black and white profile but all this other all these other profiles you won't have so to me that's a big negative that's why I don't do it and the other reason is I find now I have an older camera it's a Canon 5D Mark II and I find this with all cameras pretty much so the colors will be shifted some cameras won't be shifted that much but on my 5D Mark II, I get a real big color shift on my on my images. So that's one of the reasons I don't do it as well. So I'm missing my camera profiles and I'm also missing my, you know, I'm, the colors are slightly off. And, you know, to me, I don't like that trade-off. So I'd rather go ahead and do my raw processing, my basic editing right here in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. And then I just send that TIFF file into Photoshop. It's a lossless format, the same as a raw file. So I'm not losing any pixels. And then I just denoise it and sharpen it in Photoshop and I'm good to go. And that's why I do it. And I highly recommend that you do that the same way. If you'll take a look at my screen right now, you'll notice I have duplicate images of four different images, okay? The image to the left is always going to be the raw file. The image to the right of that would be a raw file that was processed with Denoise AI. In other words, this cat was processed with Denoise AI as a raw file. This flower was here. This grill was processed with Denoise AI as a raw file, and this flower as well. So the image to the left are always going to be the raw files, but you see the shifting of the colors. And this is another reason, as I explained earlier, why I don't want to uh, denoise my images as a standalone product in Topaz Denoise AI. I don't want these color shifts. I hope that makes sense. And I just want to really just give you an understanding of why I do the things that I do. 
and I hope this helps. I'm sorry for being a little long-winded there, but you really need to know this because this is the reason why this workflow that I do is the workflow that I do. So it's part of this instructional video. You need to know these reasons why. Now, when I'm ready to process my image, all I do is right-click it, go to Edit In, and I'll just click on Edit Photoshop 2021, and bang, I'll be in Photoshop 2021. I'm actually already there, so I'm just gonna go there now, and now I'll show you how I denoise and sharpen the image. This image is a little bit soft, and it has a very high ISO, so I need to denoise it with Denoise AI due to the fact that it has an extremely high ISO, and I also need to do some sharpening on it because it has some uh, sharpening type issues to it. It's slightly soft. So let me zoom in so you can really see. See that noise? We have a ton of noise in here, okay? And it's slightly soft. But I highly recommend that you do your denoising before you do your sharpening. That's very important. My next step is to send this into Topaz Denoise AI. And I'm going to duplicate my background layer because I don't want to really send the background layer into uh, Denoise AI. Now, you can convert this to a smart object if you like to work that way. You would just right click here and click on Convert to a Smart Object. And that way, if you weren't happy with your result, you could go back in and redo it. Um, I don't generally work with smart objects, so I'm just showing you my workflow today, okay? And so now what I would do is just come up here to Filter and come to Topaz Labs, and we'll uh, click on Topaz Denoise AI, and we will get started. What you're seeing right now is the comparison view, and see right here where it says view. You have different views. You have single, split, side-by-side, -side, or comparison view. I like to start out in the comparison view so we can compare all the models. And by the way, if you want to see how these different models what they do, you can hover over this question mark under AI model and you can read about the different models. Now, my favorite models are the standard model, the low light model, and now the severe noise model because I shoot a lot of images at really high ISO because I'm hand holding my camera and I need high ISOs. But denoise never lets me down. It gets rid of noise on any, any image that I throw at it. Okay, this image, remember, was ISO 1600. So I think the standard model is going to be just fine, but we could take a look at all of them. Right now, I'm zoomed into 100%. And see the preview window here? You can take this box and move it around wherever you want to go. And this is important because you really need to do some pixel peeping here, okay? I think I'm going to go with the standard uh, model because I think it looks good after looking at all the different models. I think that's the one I want. And then that's generally the one most people will use unless you have extremely high ISOs. And then you might move into low light or severe noise. And some folks like clear. I never use clear. That was in Topaz Studio too. It's okay, but I think standard low light and severe noise are your higher quality models in my opinion. This is like a carryover from Topaz Studio 2, so I don't really use it. It was great in Topaz Studio 2, but we didn't have Denoise AI at the time. These are newer models, okay? Anyway, so that's looking good, and now I'm going to change my view over to side-by-side, -side, and I'm going to make sure I have the standard model checked. And you'll notice it's blue right here, and this is my standard model right here, okay? To the left of it, obviously, would be the original. All right. Now, the and most important thing to do is, is to do some pixel peeping. Because right now, you'll notice remove noise is at a 1. So that's really low. But if I move around the image here, I think we might find some areas like, I don't know if you can see it, but right in here, there's a little bit of noise. Let me go around to different areas and see. It has to update itself every time you move it. But I can see maybe just a little bit of noise in here. You may, may or may not be able to see it right in here. So what I'm going to do is bump my noise up a little bit here. I think I'm going to try a 13 and let it render itself out again. Okay, that looks good. Let's look down here. But to me, this is very important to kind of go around your image and make sure you've got rid of all your noise. And this is where a smart object comes in handy because if you didn't do this, you might have to go back and redo it. So... I just do it right at the beginning. I just go around my image and see how it looks. Okay, and once I think I got it, I'm good to go. Now, I'm going to send this into Sharpen AI. So you may say, well, should I pull this enhanced sharpness down? I find it really doesn't matter too much if you do or you don't. But, I mean, you could, you could ease it off a little bit, but it's, it's not really doing much to the image. If you compare the sharpness to the image on the left to the right, 
they look pretty similar. So I think we're okay. I don't think we have to touch this. So I'm not going to touch it. As far as recovering original detail, I don't think I've lost any detail. But if you felt you have, you can start to move this to the right. But you got to be careful. If you go too far, you'll start to bring some of that original noise back in. But I find I generally don't have to use that too often. And color noise reduction, remember, I don't have to touch it because I use that default setting of 25 in Lightroom. So that helped me. I don't have to mess with that. I think everything is good here after I've done some pixel peeping. All I need to do is click apply and that'll send me right back into Photoshop. I'm letting this render in real time so you can really see how this latest update is really super fast. Now, I could have done masking in uh, Topaz Denoise AI if I wanted to, but I don't do that because I can always throw a layer mask on it here in um, Photoshop if I needed to. And I find when I'm denoising, I generally don't do any masking anyway. I do, however, like to use masking when I'm using Sharpen AI because a lot of times I'm only applying it to certain parts of the image. Like, for instance, on this image, I'll just apply it to the sharper areas of the flower. In the out-of-focus areas, there's no need to apply it. But let's go ahead and zoom in on this image here and see what kind of a job Denoise did. So here's the before noise reduction. See all that noise in there? I'll zoom even in even tighter so you can see it. And here's the after. But it totally gets rid of it. And I love it. It's an amazing, amazing product. All right, so now we're ready to send this into Sharpen AI. Now I can do one of two things. I can either send this layer right into Sharpen AI and use the uh, masking abilities in Sharpen AI to apply just to certain areas of my image, or else I can duplicate this layer, send that layer into Sharpen AI, and when it comes back, apply a layer mask onto it, and then just apply it to certain areas. Or I could turn this into a smart object if I wanted to. But I'm just gonna go ahead and send this layer right into Sharpen AI and use the masking in Sharpen AI. Now I'm going to go ahead and come up here to filter and we're going to launch Sharpen AI and we will get started. I have the comparison view on and we can take a look. Here's motion blur next to the original. So compare the original to all the different models here. Here's motion blur down on the bottom left is out of focus and to the right of that is too soft. And for my eyes, I think motion blur is the winner here. And so what I think I'm going to do is just take my remove blur and move it a little bit more to the right. See if I can get a little bit more out of it here. And you, it's updating itself. Yeah, and that looks good. Now I could go into the side-by-side uh, -side view and go in closer if I want to. But I think I'm good with that. But now what I want to do is apply a layer mask to this. Or we want to mask this uh, adjustment on. So let's go ahead and click mask here. And then what we need to do is... Uh, I'm going to add it. So see right here where it says add. I'm going to shut my overlay off right here. And now all I have to do is paint it onto the areas that I want to add sharpening to. This is real simple to do. Let's give it a little bit of a paint. There's no need to apply the sharpening everywhere. Just the areas that need to be sharp. That are, I mean, we're actually already in focus, I should say. Out of focus areas, I don't want to apply it to. And when you lift off, up off of that after you've painted it you can see there it's been applied and then on this leaf here this leaf gets sharper too when I paint if I paint the sharpest on it you'll see here in a second watch and see if it snaps into focus yeah and it does isn't that cool and once you're happy with it all you need to do is click apply mask and that mask is applied and now all we need to do is apply this and it'll send us right back into Photoshop and it's processing and I'll let this run real time it's really fast. These newer updates with uh, Denoise and Sharpen AI have greatly increased the speed of processing, and I'm real happy with it. So here we are back now. Now remember, I took that Denoise uh, layer and sent it right into Sharpen AI. So now let's go ahead and zoom in, and we'll check our results. Okay, so those flowers are definitely sharper. There's no noise on this image. When I shut this... Uh, Layer one off, you'll see the original with noise and out of focus. So there it is with noise and out of focus. And now when I turn it back on, you will see the focused and denoised image. Pretty cool stuff. So that's my workflow. You can see these flowers are super sharp. And that's really all there is to it.
I hope this tutorial was helpful for you today, uh, showing you my Lightroom to Photoshop workflow for denoising and sharpening your images with Topaz products, Denoise AI and Sharpen AI. And I also wanted to show you why I don't uh, process my images in Denoise AI as a standalone product because of the issues I talked about earlier. I'm not going to go over those again, but you can go back to the beginning and find out why. So I wanted to make it perfectly clear today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.